Hi everyone, I'm Izzy at Izoso Studio. I am the designer of the Dustin dress and it's my privilege to uh, film a sew along today for you so that you can follow along nice and easily at home. This dress has been designed with beginners in mind. It's a really simple dress to sew up. There are no buttons, no zips, no elastic, nothing complicated. The only things you need are some fabric and some thread and that's it. We really wanted to design a dress that was simple to sew um, and was just a lovely summer dress that is really versatile. The dress is fitted across the bust and then it has drawstrings which tie around the neck and then can be tied in loads of different ways around your body. So you've got loads of options for how you want to choose to style your dress. If you have a look at the booklet in the very last few pages, there's at least six options there for different ways to style your dress. So find a way that suits you once you've finished sewing the garment and uh, just really enjoy styling your dress in different ways. So the dress comes with two options. You can either sew it as a knee length version or as a maxi dress with a split that goes up the center front. We would recommend medium to lightweight fabric. What we've said is that this pattern is for a woven fabric, which means it's got no stretch to it. It's not knit, it's not jersey, it's not French terry. This is just woven fabric. So some fabrics that you might want to consider would be, especially if you're a beginner, lawn cotton. This is quite a nice stable fabric to sew. It's quite easy, it doesn't move around too much so I'd thoroughly recommend that for complete beginners. <laughs> Other fabric choices would include viscose, tensile, rayon, georgette, chalet or even crepe de chaine. So for this sew along I have got some beautiful um, fabric which has been gifted to us by Minerva very generously. This is their viscose chalice uh, banana hills fabric and we've also got a nice thread which is just going to tie in really beautifully. So officially these are the only two things that that you are going to need. However, you will note in the pattern that it talks about the option of making your drawstring, which we have assumed you're going to do out of your fabric. However, if you don't want to do that step and you would like to use a drawstring, you could use something which looks like this. This is a flat drawstring, and so it's gonna sit on your body like really nicely, but it just means that you don't have to um, sew up a drawstring, <laughs> so it's completely your option. If you um, buy something that is contrasting, uh, it can look quite fun and quite jazzy. And the amount of drawstring that you will need is on page six, so take a look at that and refer to your size for the length of drawstring you'd need to order if you don't want to sew it out of your own fabric. So that's completely up to you. So the book that has a glossary which talks you through some key terminology we'll be using. Obviously in this demo I'm going to be talking you through where all the relevant sort of terms are. I'll explain that as we do the sew along. So don't worry too much about that. Now choosing your pattern size is a critical aspect of getting the fit right and that's one of the beauties of actually sewing your own clothes. It's worth noting this pattern has been drafted for someone that is five foot six which apparently is the average height <laughs> of a woman. Um, so if you are significantly taller than that or shorter than that you may need to use the lengthen and shorten lines on the pattern to lengthen and shorten your pattern. <laughs> Here at Isoso Studio, we try and be as inclusive as possible with our pattern designing. And for that reason, our pattern comes in a size 6 to 34. Not only does it come in a really size inclusive range, but we also have not one, but two cup sizes. Now, pattern cup sizes are different to bra cup sizes. So in order to work out which cup size you need, you need to do this measurement with me to ascertain the difference between your full bust and your high bust. The first thing we should do is to fill out the little box on page five. So write down the measurement of your high bust up here and your bust at this point. Now fill out the little box below and fill out the bit that says the measurement for your high bust. Based on your high bust measurement, work out which pattern size you need to cut. I then want you to take your bust measurement and subtract your high bust measurement from it. If the difference is between 0 and 8 centimeters, you can cut the pattern cup B size. If the distance between your bust and your high bust is more like 8 to 13, you can use the cup size D for your pattern size. Please note that we've only done two cup sizes here, so if your, if your difference between your high bust and your bust is more than 13 centimeters, you may want to consider either sizing up or doing a full bust adjustment to get the perfect fit. Next, tap in your waist and your hip dimensions and go to the size chart and work out which ones you need. 
On page eight, the booklet then talks you through how to print out your pattern. So the pattern is provided um, in PDF format as an A4 or an AO. And if you have printed, had the pattern printed professionally at AO, that's great. You've got your three sheets there. However, if you're printing it to A4 at home, please just do be mindful of the little box at the bottom of page eight, which tells you which sheets you need to print for which different dress options. Whether you're doing view A, which is the maxi dress, or view B, which is the knee length dress. Don't forget, if you're printing at A4, to print to scale. Once you've got your pattern size sorted and you feel confident with that, you can go off and cut out your pattern based on your body size. Now, the amount of fabric that you will need for this pattern depends on the width of the fabric. Now, most fabric comes in two different widths, so 115 centimeters wide or 45 inches wide or um, 150 centimeters wide, which is 60 inches wide. Now, some fabrics will be smaller or wider than that, um, but those are the two most common widths of fabric. So for our fabric requirements chart, we have listed how much fabric you need depending on your size for the width of the fabric that you've chosen. It's worth noting that the maxi dress is a little bit too wide for some sizes, for size 12 onwards. So really, we would recommend that you purchase 150 centimeter wide fabric for your pattern. On page 10, we have listed out some cutting layouts for you. These are just suggestions and um, you may well find that there are more economical ways of laying out your pattern pieces. However, this is just a nice suggestion for you to get you started. And obviously, if you're not cutting out pattern piece D, which is the drawstring, you will need a little bit less fabric, won't you? <laughs> so you need to choose your dress version. Are you going to sew view A or view B? For the purpose of the sew along, we're going to be sewing the maxi dress, which is view A. For the maxi dress, we are going to cut out um, all of the pattern pieces, actually, A to F. Um, we are going to cut out the drawstring for the sew along, and we're also going to add pockets. These Pockets and drawstring are optional. Our patterns always have a 15 millimeter or 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. What this means is that your stitch line should be one 15 millimeters away from the raw edge of the fabric when you sew it. So we've got two options for this dress, with pockets or without pockets. So as we start to sew this dress, if you're sewing it without pockets, you can do steps one and two. However, if you're sewing it with pockets or with me today, we're going to move straight to step three. Okay, so to start off with, we're going to do pattern piece E, which is our pockets. So we have four of these, and what we want to do to start off with is we actually want to uh, finish off the raw edges so that they don't uh, peel away and they don't kind of rip away as we wear the garment. So there are multiple different ways that you can do this, uh, and we are going to use an overlocker in today's video. However, if you don't have one of those, you can use pinking shears, which look like this, and they've got the little zigzag on them. You can also use your sewing machine to do a zigzag stitch all the way around the raw edge, right really close to the raw edge. And some machines also have a, a bit of a fake overlocker and foot, which you can use, which wraps a thread around the outside. So to start off with, we are going to just take one of our pocket pieces and we're going to finish the rounded curved edge only. We don't need to finish this side here. So there we have it, one pocket beautifully finished with an overlocker. We've left this side unfinished, but the remaining curved side is all finished. We're going to repeat that process for the other three pockets. We have our front dress pattern piece, which is pattern piece A, and we've got a number of different notches down the side. So you want to grab a pocket piece and basically you want to place it between the two pocket notches. So find out where those are in your pattern. Don't forget you've got the waist notch. So you come down from the top, you've got one waist notch here, and one pocket and another pocket notch down here. So you want to place the pocket between those two notches, which are the pocket notches. Grab some pins and then just pin that in place. 
We're working along the side seam of the dress at this point. Now I would always pin my pins perpendicular to the raw edge because that way it doesn't matter which way you sew it up on the sewing machine. You can always see the head of your pins to pull out. Now we're going to sew this together using a 13 millimeter offset from the raw edge. If you're not sure what that distance looks like, why don't you just mark it on using a washable pen? And you could just mark on a few points where it's a 13 millimeters from the raw edge, just so that when you're sewing it, you can see it really clearly. So take your fabric to your sewing machine and just sew that line together, sewing the pocket and the dress front together. So we've sewn that pocket all the way from one side right to the other side, and it's all sewn together. We're now going to repeat that process for the other front pattern piece. So if this is my center front, my pocket is going to go right side down. Let's just find the notch. There's one here and one there. So we're just gonna place the pocket quite simply between the two notches. Pin the pocket to the dress front. Stitch that in place using your 13 millimeter seam allowance. We're now going to repeat that process for the back, the skirt back. So go and grab pattern piece C, which is a, the biggest pattern piece you've got in your collection. And you'll see again down the side seam, we've got three notches, our waist and then two pockets. So grab a pocket and put it right sides together between those two pocket notches and just pin that in place. Now my fabric moves quite a lot um, because it's quite flowy, so I'm putting quite a lot of pins into mine. Once you've pinned one side, you can then pin the opposite side at the same time, and then you can sew them together at the same time. And then we'll just sew the final fourth pocket. Step five, it just asks us to finish the raw edges of the garment. So that's finishing uh, using an overlocker or zigzag stitch or pinking shears all the way down this side. So we've got four side seams to do in total. One for the front two pieces, one for one front side, one for the other front side, and then two at the back. Step six, we're now going to press the seam allowance towards the pocket or effectively, if you've got the pocket like this, we're now going to flip the pocket out so that both seam allowances are pressed towards the pocket. So just press that in place. Then repeat that process for the other three pockets of just pressing the pocket and the seam allowance out and away from the dress. Step seven, we're now going to understitch the pocket to the seam allowance, just about three millimeters away from the folded edge. So by doing a line of stitching on this side of the fold, on this side here, we're then going to be sewing the pocket to the seam allowance at that point. Your stitch length can be whatever you would like it to be for under stitching. Uh, some people like to have it smaller, some people like to have it the same length. You do whatever you want. For me, I'm just going to leave it at a standard 2.5 mil stitch length. Now I'm stitching these pockets um, and doing the understitching with the right side of the garment up on my machine. The reason that I'm doing this is because usually the stitches from the reel uh, end up looking a little bit neater and tighter than the stitches that are done from the bobbin on the machine. So often they look exactly the same, but it's just good practice if you're doing a stitch that may be seen, even if it's understitching, to have the right side of the fabric facing up. And so we've got our pocket piece here and we have just sewn a line of stitching about three millimeters from the raw edge and it's attaching the pocket to the seam allowance. You can see our second line of stitching is just running on the inside of the seam allowance. So the pocket's being held against the seam allowance, which is really nice. My top tip for this <laughs> is um, to stitch it really slowly so you get a regular and consistent distance from the folded edge at that point. Step eight is just to repeat that process for the other three pockets. So for step nine, we are going to be sewing the front to the back. So lay out your back um, 
dress piece, which is pattern piece C, and then take your front pattern piece, pattern piece A, and just lay that with right sides together on top of the back pattern piece. Now, <laughs> there should be some notches here that will help you line up your fabric, especially if you've got slippy fabric like I have today, that will make it a little bit easier. But if you have overlocked your seams, you may well have lost your notch marks. So if you want to remake those notches, feel free. Uh, now we're going to pin this whole seam allowance together. And once again, I'm just going to pin at the points of reference that I know. So my pockets need to line up beautifully. So I'm gonna line those up and pop another pin at the bottom of the junction of the pocket there. I can then pin these side seams together now. I'm also gonna pin all the way around the pocket. So this now ensures that we can actually get our hands into our pocket. <laughs> From the hem all the way around the pocket and up to the top or from the top all the way around the pocket and down to the bottom it really doesn't matter which way around you want to sew it let's do that together now we're going to use our standard seam allowance which is 1.5 centimeters 15 mil or 5 eighths of an inch When you get to the bottom of your pocket, you just want to uh, have your needle down and in, in through your fabric, and then you want to just pivot, lift up the foot, and then pivot the fabric around. So then you can follow around the curve of the pocket. I always like to reinforce the stitch at this little junction where it, where it kind of goes from up the seam across down to the pocket, simply because I feel like that area gets a lot of tension when you put your hands into your pocket. So I always like to go sort of backwards and forwards around that little junction a few times. As you're going around the curve, you may just need to lift up your foot a few times just to uh, take the tension out of the fabric as you move around the curve. Wonderful, so we've sewn from the top, pivoted at that point, all the way round, pivoted again at that point, and then gone all the way down to the hem. We're now gonna repeat that process for the other side. So put the front pattern piece over the back pattern piece with right sides together. Line up all your key reference points, your notches included if you've still got those. Draw them back on if you need to. And then just pin around the side seam, pinning around the pocket as well. Now my fabric moves quite a lot, um, which is going to mean that it's going to have a beautiful drapey finish to it. But um, the consequence is that I just need to pin it loads to make sure that um, it's all going to stay in place nicely. Sew down the side seam with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. We're going to move on now to sew our casing loops. These are the bits at the back of the dress that are going to hold the drawstring together and if you need it, help hold the, the back of the dress up. So we're looking at pattern piece F, which is our dustin dress loop. We've only cut one out of our fabric here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do for step 10 is just to have the wrong side of the fabric facing up and we're just going to fold it in half lengthways. Press that in place and then open it out. So you've got a nice fold line in the middle there. Step 11 is to fold one long raw edge down to the pressed center. So we're gonna take one side and we're just gonna fold it down all the way along so the raw edge is meeting the center. And then we're just gonna press that in place. Step 12, fold the other long raw edge into the pressed center and then just press that in place. In step 13, we're just going to fold the whole thing in on itself. So all the raw edges are now enclosed within that loop. At this point, you're probably just going to want to add some pins to hold it all together. So in step 14, we're going to just top stitch the loop down this side here, which is the side that has the folds in it. This is our first little bit of top stitching. So top stitch, stitch length can be whatever you want it to be. Aesthetically, it's completely up to you. This is your project. However, um, I'm just gonna use a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Just keep it standard and keep it simple. So we're going to do a line of stitches about three millimeters away from that edge. 
can just press that in place. That just helps to seal those stitches nicely. In step 15, we're now just going to um, divide this loop into three equal parts. So you can just fold it over and fold it over again and just snip it in place so you've got three equal parts. Each little loop should be seven centimeters long. So you can just measure those out and cut them out. Great, we're gonna move on now to look at the casing piece. So we should have cut two pattern pieces of the casing um, and mine is the B cup but yours may well be the D cup pattern piece and what's really important is to annotate and to cut where these notches are. This is going to help us um, to locate where our little loops need to be tied onto. So just make sure that you snipped into those for the correct size that you've cut. So for me it's a size 12, I'm just snipping into the 12 at that point. Next, we're gonna open up the fabric and then lay one piece on top of the other with right sides together. Just pin one side together. And we're just gonna pin the short edges together, not the long ones. And then sew that using a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. And then just press that seam allowance that you've just sewn open. Okay, so we're moving on to step 17. And what we're going to do now is attach the loops onto our casing. So the very first thing that we want to do is we want to take one of our loops with the right side of our fabric facing up and the loop is gonna go right over our center seam that we just sewn. So it should be exactly the same width as our casing. So just pin that in place or clip it in place, whatever you prefer. Then moving on to step 18, we're going to repeat that process by putting the other two loops in line with where the notches are. Next, we're going to baste those in place. Now a basting stitch is one that is a longer stitch length and it basically just holds things in place until you actually sew it um, for real or sew it together for the final stitch line. So this is a longer stitch length of you know four to five millimeters long and all we're going to do is just stitch along each of the ends of the loop. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna stitch all the way along there and then all the way along there. Um, you can either just do a little bit of stitches there, little ones there, little ones there, or you can just do one long line all the way across. Now, because this is just a hidden line of stitches, we want to sew this line of basting stitches within the seam allowance. So we're going to sew this line of stitches at about one centimeter from the raw edge. Once you sew one side, you can then sew the other side of the loops together. Okay, lovely, so those loops are now sewn on and they're not gonna go anywhere, they're staying there nice and firm. You can see on the other side, we've got a nice long row of basting stitches. Moving on to step 19, we've got a lot of fabric here, so make sure you've found the top of your dress. Um, I'm gonna do it upside down compared to the images on the um, booklet, because it's easier to pin that way. Um, find the top of your dress and then, I want you to make sure that you've added the notches. So there should be one up here, one there, one there, one in the middle, and one over here as well. So if you've not got those notches, pop them on now. Next, take your um, casing pattern piece, and I want you to line up the notches. So we've got two notches here and two there. We've got one here should line up with that one, and another one here should line up with this one here. So pop your casing down on the fabric. The first one I would line up would be these ones in the middle here. So pin these in place, and this is with right sides together. Now then, as you pin, around, you'll see there's a bit of a curve here, isn't there? So you might just want to sort of straighten that out as you then pin your side seam. Don't forget that our side seam has been pressed towards the front. So just make sure as you're pinning it that you're aligning that seam underneath so that it's um, pointing towards the front. Then moving on to the other side, pinning the edge over here first, and then the notch. These are my nice little references, it's lining up beautifully. Lovely, once you pin that all in place, just sew all the way along using your standard 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. You will notice that our basting stitches will then be within the seam allowance and we won't be able to see them when the fabric's opened out.
as you're going over your loops, you may want to just reinforce the stitches a few times because that's going to have quite a lot of tension as you wear the garment too. So we've now sewn the casing to the dress, which is brilliant. However, when we um, actually come to do the casing and fold it over and then over again to create the drawstring uh, casing for the dress, there's going to be quite a lot of volume in here. So in order to reduce the amount of fabric that we've got, we've simply asked you in step 20 just to trim the seam allowance in half, which just removes some of the excess fabric from the casing, which we just don't need. So let's do that together now. Grab a pair of scissors and just really carefully cut this seam allowance in half all the way along. Step 21, we're just going to press this seam allowance up towards the casing all the way along. Now don't worry that we've not finished the top, that's absolutely fine, we're going to come back to that in a few steps time because we're going to finish the front all together with the casing too, so don't worry about that. <laughs> because I'm doing the maxi dress version, we're now going to move on to step 22A. 22B is for the knee length version, they're both very similar in the steps, so it's still worth following along and just watching what we're doing. The only difference is the way that we treat the bottom of the dress from the split notch down to the hem. In the instruction booklet, it says that we just need to sew all the way down the front using a two centimeter seam allowance or 20 millimeter seam allowance. The graphics on the book have it this way up with the um, edge up here and being pinned that way. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna flip my fabric around so I can more easily pin it. It's a bit closer to me at this side. So you need to just line up and put the uh, two front pieces together. Now there are a number of notches here and they should still be uh, visible for you. So just start by pinning the notches together. Now we're only pinning sewing from the notch that is up here down. Now as you pin this side, you will have a little waist notch here that you can use as a nice little reference for pinning. And there should be another one down here, which is the split notch. And they should also align nicely. So pin those first as they're your nice and um, steady references and then uh, pop some pins in between just to stabilize the fabric in between, making sure you're lining up the raw edges nicely. Continue pinning all the way down to the hemline. Now, when we sew this seam, we're going to start up here where this notch is. We're going to start here and we're going to reinforce the stitches quite a few times at the top because this is the top of the V of the dress and um, it's going to have quite a bit of tension at that point because it's um, coming over our bust at that location. So you have to just reinforce that stitch line before you continue going all the way down the rest of the top. So reinforce the stitch line, continue to sew past your waist notch, and then when you get to the split notch, which is here, again, I just want you to reinforce the stitch length a couple of times, again, because that is at the um, top of your split of your dress, so you want to make sure that um, that's nice and firm. And then I want you to continue sewing all the way down to the hem, but this is now going to be a basting stitch. So this will be your four or five millimeter long, basting stitch because we're going to unpick that at a later step but we're only going to unpick from the split down to the hem so the top bit is using a standard stitch length reinforcing at the top reinforcing when we get to the split notch which is here <laughs> and it would be really helpful actually to pop two pins in that location so that you know or even three so that you know that that is the area where you're going to need to stop Reinforce the stitch length and then continue on down to the hem using your longer stitch length. Reinforce the line of stitching as you start to sew. Don't forget that we are using a 20 millimeter or two centimeter seam allowance at this point. So just make sure that you know where that is on your machine and, and you're definitely getting that 20 millimeters. So I'm hitting my split notch now. I'm just gonna reinforce my stitch line, take out my double pins, and then I'm gonna change my stitch length to five millimeters long and continue all the way down. Step 23. We have now sewn our centre seam and all we're going to do now is just press that seam open. 
press it open all the way up to the top, leaving a nice kind of sharp point at the top up here. Next, we're just very simply going to get the raw edge of one side of the seam, pinch it in half, and then tuck it under so the raw edge is then touching the seam we've just sewn. You can then iron that in place. I'm actually going to pin that in place now as I iron and I'm going to use quite a lot of pins for this step um, because I just want to get it really nice and accurate. So continue to pinch the fabric in half, tuck the raw edge so that it's touching your stitch line and then fold it over and iron it in place. This step just takes a little bit of time and patience and this is like a really important step for the garment uh, simply because it's the centre seam isn't it so we want it to look really nice um, and just have a really beautiful finish so it's worth just taking your time there's no rush at all. This is such a nice way of finishing your seams because it just is a really nice neat finish and looks really pro when it's done. <laughs> okay so we've now prepped the uh, straight centre seam. What we're then going to do is just prep the V, the top of the V of the neckline. What we're going to do is to fold the raw edge over by two centimetres so, uh, so that it's the same width as our seam down there. So what you may want to do is to use a friction pen or use a, um, a piece of chalk just to mark a point that is four centimetres away from your raw edge. Okay so now you've got that reference point and I'm just gonna to need to move this pin down a little bit. And what we want to do now is to fold our raw edge so that it's touching that four centimeter mark. And all that means is that we've just folded it over by two centimeters effectively. Just a nice easy way of doing that. Grab your iron and just iron that in place nice and neatly. Then we're going to do exactly the same as what we did down here. We're going to take our raw edge and we're going to fold it so that it touches the line that we just ironed, that crease mark, and fold it over. Now you should find that the V is um, exactly then at the point at the start of your stitch line, and that should be a nice little reference there at that point for you. Just pin that in place. And then continue to fold the rest of the seam under and across all the way up to the top. Now at this point you can um, repeat the whole process for the other seam uh, but you may find it easier just to sew this seam now in place and then take out all the pins and then repeat the whole process all over again on the other side. So that's what I'm going to do today just for ease of showing you how it all works. So the next thing we're going to do is we just want to sew a line of stitches basically as close to the folded edge as we possibly can. However, um, the width of this seam is around one centimeter. So in the instruction booklet, we've asked you just to sew about eight millimeters away from this folded edge here. And that'll make sure that you're catching that seam allowance nicely. Just find a point on your machine and a reference where um, you can easily keep that distance consistent from that folded edge and from the center of the seam there. And that way your top stitching line, which will be visible when you wear the garment, will be consistent. So we're going to start sewing at the top of the neckline and then just sew all the way down to the hem. Just make sure that you're sewing this seam nice and slowly so you get it really nice and accurate. Make sure that you are not accidentally sewing through any other part of your dress because the dress is all sort of encased now and that'd be very easy to accidentally do. <laughs> Excellent. Once you've done one side seam, we're then going to repeat the process for the other side seam. I would also just recommend that you press the seam in place first just to seal, seal the stitches on one side nicely. Okay, great. So grab your raw edge, tuck it under so it hits the stitch line and just fold it in place. Pin that seam allowance down so that you've got a nice, easy seam line to follow. Mark your four centimeter offset from the raw edge at the top of the V-neck again, and then fold that raw edge so you create a nice 
crisp finish at that point and iron it in place. Tuck that seam under so the raw edge is touching your pressed edge and then iron that in place one more time and then just pin that in place. Now when we sew this seam we are going to make sure that we start at the top again and sew down to the hem in the same way that we did this one. The reason why we do that is just to ensure that the tension running all the way down the dress is the same. Invariably as you sew um, the machine kind of moves and shifts the fabric around a little bit uh, so we just want to make sure that it's moving it and shifting it around consistently from the top down to the bottom. If you then if you sewed this hem from the bottom up you may find that the center seam is sort of like shifting a little bit and um, you're going to get wrinkle lines. So definitely sew in the same direction for both of these center front seams. Now for view A what we're going to do now is we're going to um, open up the split. So we remember we basted that central seam in place up to our split notch which was here. So I've lost my reference for where my split notch was so I'm just going to pop a little pin in at that point so I know I'm going to unpick from there up to there. Now when you hit this bit up here you should be able to see that um, the stitches have been reinforced at that point so they'll be nice and firm and it'll be much harder to unpick them at that point too. So just very carefully unpick your seam. Now because these are nice long stitches they're actually pretty easy to unpick aren't they? Now I'm just being a bit more careful. Well, when I'm unpicking the stitches up at the top near where I know my split notch is, just to make sure I'm not going to start unpicking my central seam. So it's going to be somewhere around here that I've got my re oh exactly there yeah. <laughs> so I can feel that the the stitches are getting really nice and tight at that point. So I've opened up the split of my dress now. You will probably have quite a lot of little loose ends of threads just like me uh, where the, you've pulled out the basting stitches so just pull those all out and just tidy up your garment at this point. Step 27 is relevant for everybody no matter which version you're doing. So what we're going to do now is basically fold the top of the casing over by one centimeter. So at this point I'm going to use my washable fabric pen and just mark a point at two centimeters away from the raw edge. So let's just fold our raw edge so that it meets that two centimeter reference line and then just iron it in place. What this means is we've effectively just turned it under by one centimeter. You're going to want to make sure that you've also rolled the um, ends of the loops under and press those really nicely and firmly in place as you reach those. Okay so what we're now trying to do is we're just going to fold the casing over and we want this folded edge to just overlap slightly the stitch line that we have going on here. So if you overlap it by about three millimeters just make sure that it is sitting just to one side of that. This is a little bit tricky so just take your time with it. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to pop just a few pins as a little reference um, sticking out like this at 90 degrees to the fold that I've just done and that's just going to help those things just stay in place when I turn it over and pin it properly on the other side. Just my fabric is moving around quite a lot. <laughs> So if your fabric's moving around quite a lot, why don't you just do the same? Now when you're pinning the edges up here, we want to make sure that um, on the right side we haven't got anything that's sort of like sticking out like that and looking ugly. So just tuck in that bit that you folded over. Just make sure it's kind of tucked in and just make sure that it's really flush with this seam here so that it's lining up really nicely or just slightly inside of that edge there. And what that does is is just going to make sure that um, you can't see the inside of the casing when you're wearing it. As this is you know the top and the front of the neckline it is quite a critical area that you're going to see a lot when you're wearing the dress. Moving on to step 29, we're going to turn our dress the right side facing out and we've got our casing still up at the top up here. 
What I want you to do is to start on the left hand side of the dress as you wear it. So we've got that facing up like that. This is the left hand side of the dress as we would wear it. Now we're going to do this little technique called stitching in the ditch which is next, <laughs> which is where we're going to stitch right along the seam line. I'm going to grab some pins and just pin exactly where you're going to be stitching, so exactly within that fold of where the two fabrics meet. I would recommend that you pop quite a lot of pins in here simply because, especially if you've got um, fabric that's moving around quite a lot like I do, because you're just going to get a nice neat finish if you do it like that. You can take out the pins that we popped in earlier just to hold it in place. We have got our pins all facing towards the V. That's going to make it easier for us to sew in a few minutes. And we pinned the pins right in that seam allowance. If we flip it over, you can see that the distance of the pins from the folded edge is a, you know, reasonably consistent. It's about three millimeters. So just keep that consistent and continue pinning all the way along your casing. So there you have it, you've pinned it all. If you've got a nice little label, you may just want to pop that into the casing at this point. Step 30, with right sides facing up, we're going to stitch in the ditch, which is doing a line of stitches that runs um, where exactly where those pins are, and it sits exactly in between where the seams uh, meet at that point. What this does is it basically creates a really nice um, invisible stitch. Um, if you sew it really nicely and carefully, you'll hardly be able to see the stitch line. That's why it's called stitching in the ditch, because it's stitching in the seam allowance. Take this super slow, guys, and um, just set your machine to the slowest they can possibly go, um, and just keep checking as you're sewing that it's definitely catching underneath as well as sewing nice and neatly on the top. So there we have it, one casing, beautifully sewn. You can hardly see the stitch line in there at all because it's stitched in the ditch, isn't it? Flip it over to the other side and you can see that we've just caught about the same amount all the way around. So we've got a nice tube now for the drawstring to feed into. In addition, we've also managed to get our nice little label in there. <laughs> Step 31. So we have got five of these little drawstring pattern pieces. So uh, what we want to do basically now is we want to sew them all together to make one huge long drawstring. <laughs> so open them out and basically what we want to do is we want to pop one on top of the other and pin it in place along the short sides up here and then we're just going to keep on doing the same until we've pinned all five lengths of the drawstring into one long rectangle. So we've pinned that one in place. We're going to open it out, right side facing up, and then I'm just going to pop this one straight on top and pin it in place. I think you get the idea, don't you? <laughs> We're now just going to sew all those short sides together using our standard seam allowance. Okay, we've now got four seam allowances to press open. Step 32, we're just going to neatly tidy up the ends of the drawstring. So mark a point two centimeters from the raw edge of the fabric, fold the raw edge to meet that two centimeter line, and then fold it under again. So we've got a nice neat finish. I'm sure you're very familiar with this technique now, as we've done it a few times, haven't we? Just press that in place, and then grab the other end of the fabric and just repeat the same process for the other side. 
Okay, we have some serious ironing skills to put into practice at this point. <laughs> we are going to um, make the drawstring in a very similar way, in fact, pretty much exactly the same way as we did the loops. So you've done this technique already, we're just going to do it for the entire length of the drawstring, which is quite a long area, isn't it? So we're gonna start off with step 33, and we are simply just going to fold and iron in place the whole of the drawstring in half like this. What this does is it just creates a nice central seam, which we can then use as a reference when we fold the raw edges in one more time. So grab your iron and off you go. You may well want to get a podcast out while, you, while you're doing this step. Put on some good music, make a cup of tea before you do it. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy as you just press and sew this huge long drawstring. In step 34 we are going to fold one raw edge up to that center line and just press it in place. You might find it quite helpful to do step 34 and 35 together and step 35 is basically just fold the other raw edge so that it meets the center and um, just while it's on the ironing board at the same time you might find that easier or you might prefer just to do one and then the other totally up to you, this is your project, and just have fun however you want. Now you could also potentially um, have um, cut this all on the bias or use bias binding. Um, some of our pattern testers when they were testing this pattern uh, said that they, yeah, that they considered using a bias binding maker to do this step. Um, but we're just assuming that maybe you've not got those tools to hand uh, and this is just one way to do it. The other option, obviously, as we've said in our instructions, is that you can use bias binding tape. So it kind of looks a bit like this when you first get it. So you could do this and then just fold it uh, down the middle so that the raw edges are then encased, which is what we're about to do in the next step. Um, and that would save you some time. Uh, this step does take quite a, <laughs> quite a little bit of time, doesn't it? Um, nothing wrong with that. It's just some people are like a speedy sew. And if you do, then I would recommend that you buy ready-made drawstring. I think it can look really nice to have contrasting drawstring on this uh, garment, especially if you've got like a plain one or like a denim kind of look aesthetic that can look really fun. Um, but this particular fabric is quite busy, it's got a nice big pattern on it, so I don't want to overcomplicate the aesthetic, which is why we are making it today, so it all just ties in really nicely. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> This fabric is very drapey, so it's quite hard to get it to iron nice and um, neatly into the middle. So don't worry if yours is doing the same, it's all kind of works out in the end. We've now pressed that all in place beautifully, and all we're going to do now is we're just going to fold the entire thing in half one more time. Nice and easy, right? <laughs> Now, you may feel that, especially if you're using lawn cotton, um, like a sturdier fabric, you may not feel that you need to pin um, this in place. However, if you've got sort of drapey fabric like I've got, you may well just want to grab your pins and just pin that far edge where the two edges meet together, just in a few places, just to stop it slipping when we end up sewing it together. Step 37, now that we've pinned all of this, we're just going to sew along the short edge here and then all the way down the folded edge, the bit that's been folded, and we've got two bits of fabric that are sort of loose at this point, yeah? So we're gonna to top stitch all the way down. And what we want to do really is get our line of stitches as close as possible to this edge. So we've just said um, three millimeters, but um, just get it as close as possible so it's definitely catching both sides. Now, it is worth saying that um, the drawstring is quite long for this dress, uh, and that is simply because we've drafted it to be so long because we want to give people a lot of different options for how they tie their dress. It may be that once you've started to wear your dress, you end up wearing 
um, the tie is only in like, one specific way, you might end up just only ever tying it in sort of the halter neck style or just loosely wrapped around the back in a relaxed fit and you never actually wrap it around your waist. And if that is the case, then your drawstring may well not need to be as long as this, but start off by making it this length anyway, and then you can always just trim it down to size once you've got more familiar with the pattern and are more confident in how you want to wear it. To finish off at step 37, we're simply just going to press all of this now that it has been stitched. This helps just seal all the stitches we've just done and make sure they're just sort of really nice and firmly in place. Step 38. We are going to take a nice big safety pin. The bigger the better in this scenario because you've got more kind of leeway to pull things through. Attach it to the end of your drawstring and then we're just going to thread it through our casing. Now our casing is one massive great big loop. So we're just going to thread it all the way from one side all the way to the other. Ideally you want your drawstring to sit nice and flat. So as you sort of shove it through using the end of the, the safety pin to help pull it all through. Just try and keep it as flat as you can. When you hit the middle loop at the back, this one here, we've got uh, one on either side, you may just find it a little bit tricky to put your safety pin through it. Uh, and that's just because, don't forget, you've got the casing seam there. So your safety pin might well get sort of stuck um, on the uh, on the seam allowance as it's threading through. So just wiggle your safety pin around a little bit at that point. Ta-da! Here we have it. Okay. Right, I want you then just to be quite firm about it and pull the drawstring through so that you've got the equal amount on both sides. Okay, so we have a whole step dedicated. Step 40 starts off by saying, uh, go and try the dress on now. So refer to the back of the booklet if you're not quite sure how to tie the drawstrings around. Check it for height and check that you're happy with the hem length. Don't forget that we're going to be turning up the hem by two centimeters in total. So just bear that in mind as you look at the fit. So for view A, we've got the slit in our front of our garment. If you're doing the knee length version, you will uh, not have a slit and it'll just be a full circle that you're gonna be sewing. Step 41, so with wrong sides together, we basically just want to turn the hem up by one centimeter to start off with. And then effectively, we're then going to roll it under again. Very similar technique as to what we did with the front slit and also with the drawstring effectively. So I want you just to mark a point two centimeters away from the raw edge or just hem um, the bottom of the skirt however you feel comfortable. With wrong sides together now, fold up that hemline up to that marker point that you've marked and that will mean that you've rolled it up by one centimeter in total. Now, the next step is going to be just to turn it under again by 10 mil. So I would do this step at the same time, to be honest, while you've got the iron out and while you've got the fabric sitting nice and flat on your ironing board, I would just roll it under again by 10 mil. Pin that in place, and I'm putting my pins facing um, this way, because when I pop it through the sewing machine, I want to be able to pull them out nice and easily. Once you have pinned that all in place, we're then gonna move on and just sew it. This is your last line of stitches, which is really exciting. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Now, when you're sewing your hem, uh, you really should have the fabric with the right side facing up. However, if you're happy that your bobbin is creating really nice, neat stitches, and you're happy to see those stitches on the right side of the fabric, you may also just sew with the wrong side of the fabric facing up. This is your project. It's completely up to you how you want to sew. <laughs> Just make sure that you are keeping your stitch line a consistent distance from the folded edge at the bottom of the hem, just to keep it really nice and neat. Step 
The final thing I would just recommend is once you've sewn that hemline is just to press it one final time in place, making sure that you're cutting off any of the loose strands of thread on your garment as well. So there you have it, a beautifully hemmed bottom of your dovestone dress, looking absolutely gorgeous. So here we have it, our beautiful dovestone dress, fully complete in all its swishy glory. I absolutely love the pocket detail and that central slit that just gives a bit of drama to the dress and allows a bit more freedom of movement as you're walking around in your beautiful garment. When you put the dress on, make sure that the casing is flat at the back. We don't want too many gathers at the back of the dress, but we want to encourage those gathers in the casing to sit at the front and over the high bust. What this means is then that the dress is just gonna drape really nicely over your full bust and straight down to the waist, ensuring a nice, comfortable fit at the front. So you can style your dust in dress just like this in the beautiful strappy version, just as it is and is beautiful. However, in the slightly cooler months, you may want to pop a t-shirt underneath, which I actually think looks really lovely, especially with just the strap detail and the way it just ties around the back. It just kind of, um, Oh, it just kind of transforms the way it looks, doesn't it? So I hope you have loads of fun styling your dress in loads of different ways. So a huge congratulations for finishing your dovestone dress. This is a massive achievement to finish a garment. I hope you found that really fun and really enjoyable as you followed step by step making this beautiful, amazing, delightful dovestone dress. <laughs> we always love to see our garments out there in the wild. So if you would like to share your make with us on social media, please do use the hashtag dovestone address and tag us here at Isoso Studio. And then we're definitely gonna be able to see it. I cannot wait to see loads of your versions out there in the wild looking absolutely stunning. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for purchasing a pattern. I hope you have so many summers full of fun memories wearing your beautiful dovestone dress.